options that ask you to identify key features of quadratic graphs. So if you are getting a question that asks you to identify key features and ask you to look at a graph and label a couple things, this is the video for you to watch. I'm going to be going through all the different key features and doing two examples with you. So before we get into those two examples, there are two different things right here that I really need you to know before we go ahead and get started. The first thing you need to know is that the graph of a quadratic function is called a parabola. So if you hear me say a parabola, that is the actual graph of the quadratic. That's the U-shaped graphs that look like this, or they look like this. Those are parabolas. Secondly, the second thing I need you to know is x-intercepts are the same thing as blank, blank, and blank. When we're talking about parabolas, x-intercepts are fancy because I can ask you to find x-intercepts or I can ask you to find roots. And you just have to know that if I say find the roots, I'm talking about the same thing as x-intercepts. It's the same thing. Or I could ask you to find the zeros. You have to know that zeros are the exact same thing as x-intercepts. Lastly, I could say find the solutions, and solutions are the same thing as x-intercepts. I could ask any three of these words, you just have to find the x-intercepts. All right, easy enough. One last thing, I have two graphs here, and I want to make sure that we know that sometimes parabolas can look like this, and they can have two x-intercepts. This one has two x-intercepts. It crosses twice. Sometimes parabolas can look like this. How many x-intercepts does that one have? This one only has one x-intercept. It only touches the x-axis once. And there's one other thing. What if a parabola looked like this? How many times does that one touch the x-axis down here? This one has none. It does never, it never touches the x-axis. So there was no x-intercept. So you could have two x-intercepts, you could have one x-intercept, or you could have none. Keep that in mind as you're looking at these graphs. So sometimes you might have to answer with two x-intercepts, with one x-intercept, or with none. All right, so now here is our two examples. The first one is graphed just on a grid that made it really big so we can really look at these key features in detail. So since we're talking about x-intercepts so much, let's go ahead and look at those. We know x-intercepts are the same thing as roots, zeros, or solutions. No matter how it asks us, we know that there are those three things. So let's look at this graph. My x-intercepts would be right here and right here. That's where it crosses the x-axis. So my first one right here would be at negative 4, comma, 0. My other x-intercept right here, it happens to be right in the middle here. That point is at 0, 0. Here I had two x-intercepts, and I labeled both of them with exact coordinate points. That's how you would answer a question about x-intercepts. Another key feature that you might be asked to find is the vertex. And I like to think of vertex, if I look at the letter V and I make a dot right down at the bottom of the V, that is where my vertex goes. It's like the point of the V. So in this case, it's right down here at the very bottom of this parabola. I write my vertex as an ordered pair. So this vertex is at negative 2, comma, negative 3. Make sure you write where it's at on the x-axis first and then where is it at on the y-axis. So it's at negative 2, negative 3. That's my vertex. Another key feature that you might have to find is axis of symmetry. And this one is a big one if you have to write it in a specific way. Axis, I always think of this letter X right there in the word axis. And that makes me understand and kind of helps me remember that axis of symmetry, you have to write X equals a number. That's how you properly write the axis of symmetry, but we need to know what is that number. You look at your parabola and you want to cut it right down the middle. It's symmetric, so right down the middle. You want to make both sides the same. So if this was the middle of my parabola, right here down the middle, right there, where is that at on the x-axis? 
it's at negative 2. So my axis of symmetry would be at x equals negative 2. And there's our answer for axis of symmetry. The only other thing that this question might ask you to find is, does it have a maximum or a minimum? And I'm going to make a quick note out here to the side. A maximum has a mountain top. It goes up, and this is the maximum that it can go. A minimum goes all the way down like this, and this is the minimum that it can go. So looking at this parabola that we had graphed here, I know there's a bunch of writing on here, but this original one that we had drawn in black here, it would have a minimum. It does not have a maximum. It would have a minimum. All right, one other example. Let's get through these last one really quickly. This is what it's going to look like when you are given it on your assignment. It will give you a graph, and it will ask you these four things, and we're going to answer them real quick. The first thing we're going to answer is zeros. Remember, we have to remember, what is a zero? It is the same thing as an x-intercept. And if I look at this parabola, this one has two x-intercepts. It has one right here, and it has one right here. So I'm going to be writing two ordered pairs. This first one right here, this ordered pair, is at negative 5, comma, 0. And the other ordered pair, this 0, is at negative 1. Zero. Those are my zeros or my x-intercepts. The next thing let's look at, let's look at the vertex down here. That's the next thing we did. I think of the letter V in vertex, and I put the point to remind me of the vertex. And, this, and my graph does not look like a V. It actually looks like this. So my vertex would be up at the top. So now my vertex point is up here, and I still have to write it as an ordered pair. Remember, where is it at on your x first? This dot, this point, is at negative 3. And then on the y, it is at 4. So my vertex is at negative 3, comma, 4. All right, let's look at axis of symmetry. I always think of that x right there in axis of symmetry, and I remember to write x equals symmetry. Let's split it right down the middle and find where it goes. Here's the middle of my parabola. That middle is where on the x-axis? It's at negative 3. My axis of symmetry is x equals negative 3. And then our last question, is it a maximum? Remember, a maximum goes all the way up and it comes back down. So this is the maximum that it can go. Remember, we like to think about that as like a basketball. The max height that it can go would be all the way up here. So maximum is at the top. A minimum goes all the way down to the bottom. This is the minimum that it could go. I'm sorry that that keeps popping up. The minimum. So looking at our graph here, we should know that this one has a max. Those are the four things that you'll be able to identify on this parabola. You might be able to other, identify other things like domain, range, other things like that. But these are going to be the four that will be asked about. If you need help, you can always ask your math teacher. You can pause, rewind, and rewatch this video as many times as you need. Please let us know if you need any help.